YouTube has announced that it has suspended the monetization of his channel for violating its creator responsibility policy. Four women have accused Russell Brand of sexual assault and emotional abuse. Russell Brand denies the allegations. So you might be familiar with YouTubers sometimes in the middle of their video, they themselves will stop, look at the camera and promote a product or a website or a service. Now YouTube is listing at the top of the video that there is paid promotion. Yeah, YouTube has done this in the past uh, with other people that have also been uh, like either criminally charged with or even not criminally charged with, but instead... Uh, with uh, uh, some kind of like uh, like serious allegations of launched towards people, where they just like demonetize you. Novara did a segment on the whole thing. Welcome to Novara Live. I'm Michael Walker. Very big news day for you to Russell Brand has been accused of rape, sexual assault, and abuse. The claims come from four women who knew Brand between 2006 and 2013. One of those women was just 16 years old. The claims pertain to a time when Brand's fame was growing to stratospheric levels as he hosted comedy specials and a BBC radio show, all while developing a reputation for outrageous behaviour. Brand hosted several seasons of shows connected to Channel 4's Big Brother, as well as appearing on other primetime TV slots. In that period, he also developed a film career in Hollywood, starring in blockbusters and marrying pop star Katy Perry. So what now on Channel 4, dispatchers investigate allegations of a serious sexual nature against... Age, time out, comedian of the year, Russell Brown! Yeah, it's my first time covering it. What about, I like it, if you, if you are a fella, and you do know you do have, who you know, a dinkle, etc. It is quite nice. Them blowjobs, what you get sometimes, never suggest it, if, you know, if the girl does it, they ain't suggested it. I like them blowjobs, right, where it goes in their neck a little bit. I would never suggest it. <laughs> I wouldn't su I've not suggested it, it's the other idea. Them blowjobs where it goes, oh, 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 that noise. <laughs> nice. I wouldn't suggest it. Be wrong to suggest it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I phoned and I asked to speak to his agent directly, and somebody asked what it was regarding, and I said, that's regarding Russell Brand being a sex offender. He's grabbing at my, my underwear, pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me, and he won't get off. Like, holding me up against the wall, pushing himself in me. He grabbed me and got me on the bed. I was fully clothed, and he was naked at this point, and he held me down, and he was just aggressively trying to, you know, fuck me. I was like, oh, my God, he raped me. He um, forced his penis down my throat, and I couldn't breathe. It was just choking me. I was crying, and he said, oh, I only want to see your mascara run anyway. <laughs> them them blowjobs where mascara runs a little bit. <laughs> Good. I've never ever spoken publicly about this before. Russell seems untouchable. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, another hit piece. Yeah, exactly.
you know, Hollywood, full of fucking, um, you know, pedophiles, except for suspiciously uh, full of morally degenerate perverts and pedophiles, except for suspiciously those who just hold on to, like, right-wing values. Whenever they do some fucked up shit, that must mean uh, there is, uh, you know, they're being attacked for speaking the truth. It's such a funny fucking take to have that, like, so many Republicans uh, regularly say, like, oh, Holly was full of fucking weirdos and whatever. And then as long as one of those weirdos is, like, a little conservative, they're like, no, 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 this guy fucking 100%. He's, um, he's being uh, attacked for his ideas. Okay? Yeah. Four-year investigation probably uh, came after because uh, they were, he was speaking the truth about vaccines or whatever. He's just starred alongside Tom Cruise in blockbuster Rock of Ages and is about to embark on a new venture as the host of his own late-night chat show, Brand X. Hello, thank you very much for clapping. Welcome to the show. It's called Brand X. I'm completely disgusted in the way you treated me. Sad that I trusted you. Very angry with you and myself for getting sucked into your narcissistic world. Do you know what you put me through? My body through? This letter is for me to work through my stuff, not for you. I just needed you to hear me. If it positions that as the individual, sorry, a lady uncrossed her legs and I saw up her skirt. And that shows how the human mind works. You can be just about to make a brilliant point about homelessness and the media's service of a corporate agenda. And then you'll see up a woman's skirt and think, well, none of that really matters. He was having a show and it was his very first one in Hollywood. Brand X. I was at the trial run. There was an after party. I'd never met Russell before, ever. And he literally made a beeline for me and said, I want to meet you. We were chatting backstage. He leaned in and kissed me. It was very, very quick. Bran took Nadia's number at the party and they stayed in contact. I did go around to his place and we did have sex. He's like, do you want to use a condom or not use a condom? And I'm like, no, absolutely, we're using a condom. And he did respect my wishes then. It does this thing where he glazes over. I don't know what's going on in his head, so it was kind of weird. July 1st, 2012 was when my rape happened. I was out late and he happened to call me and say, I've had a really bad day, please come over. And I, at first I said, no, I'm not going, it's late. And he's like, please come, just come and cuddle with me. So then I gave in and I'm like, okay. The door was unlocked. I just walked into his place he comes running out of the bedroom naked. He came at me with kisses and stuff, which was kind of fun. And then it wasn't that fun when I couldn't move or I knew what he wanted from me at that point. He pushed me up against the wall. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I have a friend here, and I, I want you to come into the bedroom. I'm like, no, that's not happening. We're not doing that. And I tried to get away from him. I slipped away from the wall. I went to another wall that had a painting on it, a huge painting. My bag got actually stuck underneath that, and it's still on my arm. And at this point, he's grabbing at my, my underwear pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me and he won't get off. And he has that glazed look in his eye again. 
I was very distraught, trying to get out of the house with him being so much taller than me, like holding me up against the wall, pushing himself in me. I couldn't move. And he finally comes and gets off of me, and I push him away. He blocks the door. He's like, are you OK? I'm like, no, I'm not OK. Get away from me. And he's like, well, let's calm down. I ran out. Brother and sisters in the chat, I changed the title to issue a trigger warning, OK? We are literally nine minutes into a documentary that is talking about a four-year investigation into sexual assault. We're nine minutes in. Shut the fuck up about trigger warnings at this point, okay? Like, of course, there's going to be depictions of rape. It is a documentary about someone who did rape. We block and ban the dumbasses who go, they were asking for it quickly. The reason why I'm yelling about the people who are like, oh, why aren't you issuing trigger warning? Is because it would be silly to fucking ban you. For saying that, for weeks, for a week since this documentary first came out, you've been like, can we watch this? Can we watch? Can we watch this? Can we watch this? Can we watch this? Now I'm watching it and you guys are fucking complaining. Did you want me to watch it so you could fucking complain? Is that why? Is that the reason why everybody was like, oh, can you please cover the Russell Brand situation? Can you please cover the Russell Brand situation? I just really, really want an outlet where I can complain. And I jumped in my car. I was in a daze. Nadia replied later that morning. That same day, Nadia went to a local rape treatment centre to report what had happened. She underwent tests, was given antibiotics and emergency contraception. They took my underwear and obviously the samples. Nadia gave staff this detailed account of the incident. She decided not to go to the police. I was just too scared. I didn't want to put my family through that, let alone me through that, with him being famous. When I went in for one of my first therapy sessions, I literally couldn't say the word rape. I had to keep saying sexually assaulted, but by the end of it, I was like, oh my God, he raped me. People in situations like this always look for a perfect victim. And in many circumstances, it's not, there's not going to be a perfect victim, right? And it, the situation does not demand it. And yet when the perfect victim, and by that I mean like someone who has very clearly been violated and did the things that everyone claims you're supposed to do in spite of the, the, uh, the, the insurmountable amount of pressure, societal pressure that stops you from doing that in that moment, Okay. People still never look at a situation like this and go, well, okay, well, this is pretty undeniable, okay? And before people fucking freak out because we're talking about rape uh, and, and everyone has to be fucking insanely pedantic about what I'm mentioning, the concept perfect victim is not one that I invented, okay? Shut the fuck up and listen to the words that I'm saying. The expectation from people is that, oh, well, why didn't someone go to the fucking cops? Why didn't someone get a fucking rape kit? kit? Okay? Why didn't they fight back? Like, these are already ridiculous expectations, as I very clearly defined. Okay? They're already ridiculous expectations and victim blaming. But the reality of the situation is that even if someone is doing that, when they don't need to do all of this, 
to be believed. And when they finally come out and, and, and talk to someone, those very same people still turn around and say, nah, it's a lie. Actually, you do need proof. It's how the legal system works. Yeah, except, you know, testimony is proof. That's number one. And secondly, you dumb fuck. She went and got a rape kit. You absolute fucking moron. She also texted Russell Brand, who responded to her text messages immediately afterwards. She went into therapy immediately. What the fuck are you saying? Still said allegedly, said you actually need proof. And then said, I know. So you're saying you know the details of the situation and it, you still don't believe her, literally proving my point about people who are like, oh, I'm looking for the perfect victim. And then when a perfect victim does appear, even though they don't have to be, you still don't believe them. You just proved the point I was making. That makes no fucking sense. This was in 2012, but other allegations against Russell Brand go back many years. Hey, what a year it's been for you, Mr. Russell Brand. But ever such a nice time. Can you just do a three? Three. Side, please. <sighs> I sent my resume to one of those agencies that like will place you places, and I was given this interview to work with Russell. The only thing I knew about Russell is that I had watched the NME Awards a week or two before I got this interview. And at the NME Awards, Bob Geldof called him the C-word. <laughs> Russell Brand, what a um. When I met Russell, I was like, oh, this is like weird and refreshing. And it really did seem like he was on his way up. Camden at that time. You know, it was like Amy Winehouse stumbling out of like the Holly Arms. All these like bands that I read in the NME, like hanging out. I'm like going places with Russell. You know, somebody whispering in my ear, oh, do you know who that is? It was an exciting time. I've got to be on the stage, shut up! Russell's been a national comedy tour. He was writing a book. He was writing a weekly column in The Guardian. He had two shows, Big Brothers Big Mouth. One Leicester Square on MTV. On the telly, you look you look quite cool, but in real life, you look sort of preposterous. Right, I'm <laughs> This is like the world I lived in. He always only wore his underwear, his tidy whities I don't think today I would accept like a boss only being in his underwear around me. His favorite subject was him. He was a narcissist and it was like almost a joke. I was trying to get his attention because we had had to go somewhere and I couldn't get him to listen to me. And I literally. It's also one of those like weird situations where like, it's pretty obvious that he's do, he is like this. You know what I mean? It's so odd because like nothing about this is surprising. Like the meme that you guys sent me, Russell Brand accused of doing exactly what you think he'd do based on looking at him. Like, you know, you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but like, holy moly, this dude, his cover was already like, you know, when she's like, oh, he was a narcissist. He loved talking about himself. I'm like, I, I mean, yeah. I looked in my bag, found the, the schedule. And I said, Russell. And I showed him the picture of his face. And he looked at me and he smiled and he's like, oh, you, you get me. I mean, it was just like nonstop and not to mention a very active sex addiction. <laughs> right. So I used to be able to distract myself from feeling embarrassed and ashamed by um, drinking and taking drugs. Cheer me up a little bit. Can't do that anymore because I've spoiled it. Took too much of it. <laughs> so now, because I can't do that anymore, I like to have it off, right? <laughs> As sort of, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's cheesy idea of sex. Brand was a self-proclaimed sex addict, and his promiscuity was celebrated in the tabloid press. You were voted the Sun newspaper's shagger of the year. It was a proud day. <laughs> he went on to win shagger of the year three years in a row. 
I'm assuming, though, that the, you, 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 have, uh, you take precautions. Um, yeah, I take an awful lot of precautions. What I do is I make absolutely sure that it is a woman, mm. then go for it. He was well known for his controversial sexual humor. I'm ready. Part of this is odd, though, because it's like half of the shit that he's saying are jokes. I guess it's weird because, like, he also personally did the jokes. He played himself, basically, in a lot of movies and shit. Like, I, I don't know. It's just, like, weird. Was humor different 15 years ago? Of course uh, humor was different 15 years ago. Comedians, like rappers, they self-report from time to time. You know. pretty crap at this, aren't I? You're lovely. You're fine. Just go with it. Don't try and fight it. <laughs> I have to say that. Yeah, like, I, I would say 2000-era comedy was, like, really fucking aggro. And, and it's not even an excuse. And also, I, I obviously am not defending Russell Brand. But, yeah, 2000-era comedy is, like, was definitely... This was like the peak of like rape culture being celebrated and pushed in media, uh, in mainstream media. A lot of the things that you kind of take for granted that are considered big no-nos now, um, there was a movement to change it. You know what I mean? There was a movement to change that, like, and sanitize that part of the culture. And that's why you kind of look back at it and you go, ugh, gross. Because, like, it was gross. And plenty of people were like, yeah, this is fucking gross, dog. What are we doing? But that also does mean... Um, I mean, that was certainly um, a part of the, the, uh, the accepted rhetoric at the time. You know what I mean? It's like if you look at the leather special, it's like fucking Eddie Murphy is just like constantly uh, saying that gay people have AIDS. And everyone's just like fucking laughing like, oh, it's so funny. You know what I mean? That's so hilarious. Like, it's this weird middle ground where like he was making jokes and they're using those jokes uh in this documentary but like he also was doing the things that he was joking about you know what i mean that was the 90s with raw and delirious yeah the leather special is raw isn't it um i think that's what it was i think it was the 80s or 90s <laughs> there was no shortage of bookings are you in a bra designed by you now um no but i'm wearing my knickers get them off <laughs> like this kind of stuff in hindsight, is like, oh, wow, how gross. But at the time, I I totally can see it, especially in England, being, like, seen as, uh, seen as, like, hilarious, I guess. Uh, obviously not for everyone, but certainly was more normalized. That's why there was a lot of movement to, like, change that, okay? Okay. There won't be a point where I go, oh, don't. <laughs> There'll be a point where I go, go on in. <laughs> In the early 2000s, yes. In the future, there will be a lot of changes that happen to what you take for granted right now as, like, hilarious and uh, and is the norm. You know what I mean? Comedy isn't meant to be timeless. It's telling at current times. Eh, that's not true. You can have timeless bits. That's not true at all. Look at George Carlin. Look at some of Richard Pryor's stuff. Like, there are certainly timeless bits um, because... You can, you can be talking about the fundamentals. You know, I'm waiting for the ball jokes to go out of fashion. They will never get out of fashion. <laughs> Come on. Everyone does it. Don't be afraid of your own sexuality. Do be a bit afraid of mine, though. He could not stop sleeping with women, and he was never satisfied by it. He was never happy. We were at... His TV show, One Lester Square, he was like walking this way and he like said, Can you get me their numbers? They were members of the audience on his show. Nutty. I saw a lot of like things that, that Insane. if I were to walk into it now, I would say, Oh, that's, that's not right. But like back then, everything was so normalized. At this time, Brand worked closely with a small trusted team, including his long-term writing partner, Matt Morgan. There was this one day in particular in Edinburgh Festival, and he was headlining, and we were sitting in a bar with his writing partner and some other people. A producer was- Not real nutty, he's doing rock star shit. Yeah, a lot of people don't really realize that all every single old rock star that they listen to openly fucked like 14 year olds in their fandoms and wrote songs about how nice their vaginas were. Like I'm using very specific language here 
because that is literally what they did. Like, you might think I'm fucking wrong about this. Like, every single one of those motherfuckers did that shit. No, not just fucking Ted Nugent, okay? Literally, this is like, this is what they used to fucking do this shit. I really thought people were joking back then. Like, it was so over the top. It's funny rather than gross. The show they did a 24-7 stream of every episode from the start watching 1999 comedy in 2015 was insane. The punchline of every joke was haha gay. I love that... 2023 comedy has not in evolved and now every joke is still haha -ha gay sometimes unironically and sometimes ironically it's a timeless classic when you think about it to say something is gay is a timeless classic it always comes back around to it you know with us he's like show us show us some of those pictures russell pulled out his phone and he started showing pictures of women and they all were just sort of like giggling at the photos and like, these are women who are sending him pictures of their boobs, of, you know, naked. And at a certain point, I was like, okay, well, let me see what we're looking. What are you saying? What, why are you saying rape? They did, but they were underage as rape. They cannot consent. Yeah, thank you for explaining to us how the age of consent laws work and why they're in play. What's happening right now? Like, I, I know that. What do you mean? You said sex, not rape, just clarifying it matters? Okay. Yeah, and I, and I leaned in. As he's going through these pictures, he gets to a picture of somebody I knew. It did something. Like, the, the hidden implication there is that, like, I'm underplaying statutory rape. You know what I mean? Like, how can you be a long-term fucking community member and be like, I'm coming at this in the most cynical way possible and, and, and arriving, at the, arriving at the conversation with the assumption that you're underplaying sexual assault on a minor by downplaying it with the, but with the mention of the word sex. Anyway, I let's mean, it continue. It made me feel really sick to my stomach these are women who aren't expecting to be shown to like the dude's friends you know i felt terrible for all these people these women i felt shame and okay he said i know you know i just want to make sure it's clear because you said you were being specific with your language i know you're gonna in that moment oh. do you ever worry that there was a lack of consent from any of the women that he might have been sleeping with i never worried i saw a lot of women knowing who he was shagger of the year who willingly were walking into his bedroom i never once thought that he was somebody that would rape anybody assault anybody I, no i didn't i didn't think so as far as i knew i mean what can i possibly know that when i wasn't there but what i saw I mean, I thought he I was looks like a gross. he looks like a gross pervert, but like, I get what she means by that. I get what she means by that because it's like it's so out in public. You know what I mean? What's her angle? Her angle is like covering her own ass, most likely, but also probably being very like uh, straightforward about it. Where if she saw like hundreds of women throw themselves at Russell Brand over the course of her uh, like career being his fucking assistant. And uh, so she probably was like, there's no fucking way this would happen. Like people are just like literally throwing themselves at someone because women, just like men, misunderstand why uh, or how uh, rape happens. It's not about sex and it's not about gratifying your sexual urges. In many instances, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with power. It's not like, oh man, Russell Brandt can't get pussy. That's why he has the rape. Like, that's not usually how that works. It's usually a specific urge to have power over someone. That's how it works. Grown up, thought I was very mature, but like I, I knew everything about the world. The law enabled it as well. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be legal for a 16 year old to have a relationship with a man in their 30s. I never felt there was any kind of uh, power balance at all. It always felt like he had the upper hand. In bed, I just followed his lead. That part is fucking nuts. He was grooming a 16-year-old fan when he was like 32 or some shit. Like, I mean, every part of this is fucking nuts, but that one is like especially nuts. You know what I mean? 16 is insane. Like, what, what the fuck? Unfortunately, for the world in general, 
in the UK, that shit's legal, which I don't know why. I don't fully understand it. Like, if you have Romeo and Juliet laws, like, in certain circumstances, it makes sense. It's just, like, so that you don't get, like, unjustly prosecuted. Unjustly prosecuted as, like, an 18-year-old. You know what I mean? When you're, like, dating a 17-year-old or some shit. Like, that's why they have some of these laws. It's, like, it's like a flat acceptance of, of 16 and going all the way up to, like, however fucking old you are is wild to me. Also... This is a, a a law that exists in a lot of European nations. Make no mistake, chatters. Many people have said, oh my God, like Japan, they finally fucking raised their age of consent uh, to 14 or something. Or it was 14. What was it? What do they do in Japan? Well, I think they raised it to 16 or something. And it's like, there's literally, there are literally age of consent laws that are similar to uh, the Japanese ones all around Europe. And even in the United States of America, it, depending on which state you're talking about. Exciting what's going on. Ash Lane is gone next door. No. By April 2006, Russell Brand was in great demand. Why, hello there. Away from the limelight, at the age of 30, he was starting a relationship with 16-year-old Alice. I had a friend that worked in the Leicester Square building that housed MTV. I was coming out of that studio and Russell was coming in. He saw me and he'd asked what my business was there. I'd just been to Topshop. He took the shopping bags from my hands and picked a dress out and he said, OK, you're going to wear that on a date with me. I remember wearing, you know, a red wiggle dress and big platform shoes and had my hair blown out and was wearing makeup, but I didn't look like a woman by any means. I was... Yeah, that's Riz, but not to a 16-year-old. Brother, you can't, under any circumstance, Riz up a 16-year-old unless you yourself are also underage, okay? What the fuck are we talking about? Yeah, it's called criminal riz. Why is it legal then? I mean, do you really want me to explain why it's legal? Because it's fucking weird and perverted, and many rich old scumbags are weird and fucking perverted, dog. That's it. What do you mean, why is it legal then? It's so dumb to have this question. It's dumb to ask this question. Like, there's plenty of fucking things that just don't make sense that are the law, okay? Why is it technically all right to, to hire children to work at the fucking factory as long as you just pay a fine, you know? A, a minuscule fine, mind you. It was overwhelming, but I did feel, yeah, I liked, I liked him, and I felt a bit giddy. I felt special. I woke up to text messages from him saying that he dreamt that we were married and how happy it had made him. Looking back on the relationship, which started consensually, Alice now feels she was controlled by Brand. He would later joke on stage about his techniques with women. I can pretend to be nice for a little bit of time, you know, at the beginning of a relationship, pretending to be nice. I'm quite nice. I nod a lot. I'm quite nice. Yeah, come round my house. Yeah, we'll just watch a video. No, it's all right. I'll sleep on the sofa. Right, pretending to be nice. Yeah, no, it's all right. We'll just cuddle. No, we'll just kiss a bit. That's all right. No, I'm not even that interested in sex. Where's it come? I'll just kiss. Yeah, let's watch Wonderful Life on the video. The Nobstacle Course, I call that. <laughs> I met up with him. We walked through the door. And then again, things got very intense very, very quickly. He was like, so how many people have you had sex with? And I said, no one. Like, I've never had sex with anyone. And he got an erection straight away. Jesus and he was like, Christ. oh my God, he's like my baby, my baby. And picked me up and cradled me in his arms like a child and was stroking my hair. And he's like, you're like my little dolly. Oh fuck, yo, dude, 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 what the fuck? Russell engaged in the behaviors of a groomer. Looking back in there, but I didn't even know what that was then or what that looked like. He would try to drive a wedge between me and my parents, taught me to lie to them. 
He's like, here's how you avoid nap time. Here's how you... Is if you make if you make a pee pee in a die pee, this is how you're supposed to get out of it, yeah? Blame someone else. Fucking weirdo, dude. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. I was at my dad's house and it was eleven o'clock at night. Russell was texting me. He's like, please come over, I need to see you. I'm really upset. Like I need to see you. And I said, I can't. It's it's late. He came up with a scenario where my friend was ill. And he made me do these role play conversations with him. He was like, okay, I'm gonna be your dad and you be you. And he would correct me as we went along. He's like, no, you can't say that. Your dad's gonna say this. He had a whole script for me. Alice recalls how Brand made oh. her feel after she'd had sex with him for the first time. When everything was over. Bro, he's like 30-something at this point. Sexting a fucking 16-year-old, 16-year-old virgin that he, like, acknowledges is a virgin and is, like, kind of infantilizing. One of his friends came around to the house. They both drove me to the tube station. I felt like a little kid being dropped off somewhere. He reached his hand behind the car seat and was holding my hand behind the seat like my mum does when she's in the car. And it made me feel like, yeah, a little, I felt very small. I felt like a little kid. Can I go in? Yeah, of course you can, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Don't know why that's the bit that... <laughs> Right. I didn't feel like I could advocate for myself in any way. And I also didn't feel like I could argue with a grown up. I'd only been seeing him a couple of months. It's wild that she's like describing precisely the reason why there are age of consent laws because like children can't consent to every fucking dull motherfucker who's so dense that they just can't comprehend it and go it's fucking legal mate right it's fucking legal and she's like describing as to why it is really fucked up to do that and then after all is said and done these guys still turn around and and fucking say that rose brandon nothing wrong it's like what is this hassan you're famous ever get too many way too young girls coming up to you what a fucking take, dog. What a take. I remember he, he ran a bath for me and he made me sit in the bath. Then he said he had to leave, but I should stay in the bath for the entirety of him being gone. It was long enough for me to get cold. Oh. I got out of the bath and put a towel on. It was like, okay, I'll just, when I hear the door go or the phone go, I'll just jump back in. He was very pleased and elated when he came home and I was still in the bath. Then picked me up and dried me off and then wrapped me up in a robe and like put me on the sofa. Things took a slightly darker turn. I was sat up in the bed up against the headboard. Yes, once we're done with this, we're going to look at Ben Shapiro and so many other right-wingers defending him. Okay. And he um, forced his penis down my throat and I couldn't breathe. It was just choking me and I couldn't breathe. I was pushing him away, pushing him away and he wasn't, he wasn't backing off at all. And so I ended up having to punch him really hard in the stomach to get him off. Where's the possible TOS? He, like, finally, then he like moved, fell backwards and I was crying. And he said, oh, I only want to see your mascara run anyway. <laughs> then the US centric statutory rape discourse is, I believe, distracted from the actual rape claims. 30 and 16 is gross, and maybe it should be a crime. Well, it is a fucking crime. And in the United States of America, in plenty of states, it's a crime. So the maybe it should be a crime conversation, I know what you're trying to say, but like maybe it should be a crime conversation, I think is prescient. Okay, so that's number one. And number two, um, there's also additional crimes even under UK law. US law is problematic too, in e.g. 20 and 17 is statutory rape. No, you're wrong about that. That's precisely the reason why they literally have Romeo and Juliet laws. 
in many states. Like, you're wrong. The U.S., at the very least, even though the, the U.S. is wrong on many counts, and for the record, not only is the U.S. wrong on many counts, they, they also have, like, a lot of allowances for child marriages and the like, parental consent and things of that nature for children to literally get married to adults. But across the board, 18 being the age of consent is good. Not only is 18 being the age of consent good, but also there are accompanying Romeo and Juliet provisions that allow people to, uh, that are in the same fucking age range, allow people to, to have normal fucking relationships. While 20 and 17 is still super fucking creepy. Okay, dude, dude, dude. Like, those provisions and carve-outs are created specifically for people who have, like, been in relationships for an extended period of time when they were both children, okay? There is no, uh, there is no black and white. The closest thing you can get to with black and white in this kind of situation is age of consent laws being 18. That's it. Okay. I hate the problematic age gap discourse that happens every single time we have these conversations. And it's, it's so stupid. I know the age of consent is 16 in the UK. It's fucking insane that it, that's the case. Them blowjobs where mascara runs a little bit. <laughs> Good. Where too much saliva is cut. Uh -oh, a lot of spit. Uh -oh. But I wouldn't suggest it. That would be horrible. If I suggested it, now that, that's improper. Weren't those provisions made for people that went to high school together or at least that age? Yes, exactly. And then I knew at that point that, like, he didn't care about hurting me physically or emotionally or any of it. He just was... It took me... I was like, I know that it shouldn't take you having to punch someone and to win them. To get them off you, it shouldn't be a physical fight. After that, I just said that I wanted to go to sleep. So I just like laid on one side of the bed. And then that was when he got on top of me and held like my mouth open and was just like drooling into my mouth. And I was gagging and like, Try, I was like trying to fight him off me, but he's laying on top of me, so I can't, like, my limbs are trapped underneath him. It is my humble view that there ain't a single sexual act from the humble wank right up to the sexual apotheoses that is bumming <laughs> that ain't enhanced by spitting. <laughs> There's literally no joke there. That is just a sex tip. One of the other things that I'm finding out about England is that, like, what they considered comedy, like, I know that the, the attitudes, the vibes were, like, definitely different back then. Uh, cultural norms definitely different, right? But, like, that's just, that doesn't even, it's not even like, oh, it didn't meet the uh, standard of time, okay? Like, that's just objectively not comedy. You know what I mean? I, I don't even get what the people are supposed to be laughing at. There's no, like, exaggeration even. It's kind of wild how just unfunny he is it's weird i like that you said just living a life and talking in a funny voice but they're british so to them his voice isn't funny to them they think his voice is normal you know what i mean they all fucking talk like this too mate you know fucking hell that russell brand yeah he's quite the fucking funny man you know that's how they sound and he held my mouth shut and made me swallow it and so I was just like gagging and crying. 2750 is apparently an audio TOS. We I passed remember just it. at that point feeling like everything was very dark. I didn't know why he even wanted me there because it didn't seem like even doing that stuff didn't seem like it was making him happy. He just seemed angry the whole time. And he seemed angry with me. And I didn't know what Major I'd done. TOS from 3030 onwards. Wait, what really? Wait, let me see. Oh. What is it? What the fuck is the TO? Oh, wait, what? Wait, is that his actual dick? What the fuck? He would just like take his dick out in public? Oh God. I mean, I guess it's like totally, it's totally censored, but still. And he seemed angry with me and I didn't know what I'd done. My wife's 
My friend has a 17-year-old daughter who's been dating an 18-year-old guy for three months. The guy's parents won't let them see each other for the fear that their son is committing a crime. What do you think about these types of situations? Why are we fucking having... This, this is coming across like, like uh, what what are the acceptable circumstances where I can say the N-word in a vacuum, okay? Like, I don't care, all right? I don't care. Can we please... I see it. I see it. I see it, little bear. I see it. Like, it's fine, dude. It's fine, okay? It, it's fine. Stop... Making it something that's, like, uh, more aggressive than it is, okay? The investigations of this started before 2020, by the way. Why would the media only bring this to the public's attention now? Probably concluded the investigations, I suspect. Because I feel like the investigations first started when Russell Brand was still, like, a leftist. You know what I mean? Ostensibly. 2019, I think? Or is it 2017 is when the investigation started? I, I... If anything, it could be that, like, he he recognized that people were, like, snooping around his past, and then he made a right-wing heel turn or something. He had a super injunction in place that prevents people reporting on it. I think he was very skillful in the start from making his identity be, I'm the womanizer, I'm a sex addict, I'm inappropriate, but it's all just a joke, it's funny. It's, you know, it's a smokescreen for a lot more of his dark behavior, he can keep pushing and being more and more extreme. And what is this, Daniel Sloss? did it. There are monsters amongst us and they look like this. They knew this man for eight years and he fucking did it. There are monsters amongst us and they look like us. If you are sick of the narrative that is currently going on about men, feel free to change it, but you have to get involved. Don't make the same mistake I did for years, which was just sitting back and be like, well, I'm not part of the problem, therefore I must be part of the solution, because that's just not how this fucking shit works. I believe and deep down I know that most men of good, of course we are, but when one in ten men are shit and the other nine do nothing, they might as well not fucking be there. Being good on the inside counts for absolutely fuck all. You have have to actively be good and get involved. Instead of having this fucking hero complex of being like, I'm going to beat up a rapist, fucking prevent one, stop one, because I know it can be done because I know how I fucking failed at it. Because if I'm being 100% honest with myself, were there signs in my friend's behavior over the years towards women that I ignored? The answer is yes. And then he raped my friend, and that's on me until the day I die. Talk. Jesus Christ. What a fucking ending, dude. I've seen this clip going around, but it's not about Russell Brand. Okay, what a fucking... Oh, God, I hate TikTok. Like, every aspect of this guy, I just hate, dude. Nobody questions it because it just is... Well, that's who he is. That's what he does. That's just Russell. There's uh, some stuff here, I think. Yeah, he's getting naked. And Russell Brand's journey to fame was chaotic. In the early 2000s, he was gaining notoriety for his risque on-screen antics. Oh, no. He's pissing in his own. He's pissing. He takes his pants off, and he pees in his tidy whities in public. And then a guy goes, you're sick. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Here, give us a little cuddle. <laughs> give us a little cuddle. Borrow us your jeans. But his addiction to drugs and alcohol was becoming a problem for those working with Brand. It cost him his show on MTV and he was sacked from comedian Steve Coogan's feature film, Cruise of the Gods. Because I've caused all trolls fighting in a lap dancing club. I got into a mad argument with a prostitute in a brothel in Istanbul. None of How big is his wiener? Uh, it's not very big. You can, I mean, the photo, I, I have seen that photo before. I didn't even realize it was actually Russell Brand. I didn't. What was I? You weren't there yet. I know, otherwise I'd have been under your wing. I'd have been safer. Despite Brand's career hanging in the balance, in 2002, he was signed by celebrity agent John Knoll, who sent him for a three-month stint in rehab. Knoll discussed this in a 2015 documentary about Brand's life and career. You recognize the penis without the person's face in the picture too? Um, no, you can see his face, but it's because he's so young. It was back in like 2002. I had seen that photo being circulated around over the course of this past week, and I didn't realize. I thought it was just like a Russell Brand lookalike that people were making fun of him with. And and I uh, just saw it in the documentary, and that's when I put two and two together. On the way he's going, he'll be dead in six months. So we pulled his work and put him on the train, and that was the start of Russell in rehab. Brand emerged in early 2003, clean and ready to work. And Noel started putting him up for jobs. I 
Sam Russell. Paving the way for his entry into mainstream television. We've got new rules. We've got a new house, 12 new housemates who are going to be taking up residence. Big Brother was a television phenomenon. Millions tuned in every night. It was made by Endemol Productions and commissioned by Channel 4. Is he an info baby or something? Why so much dedication to such a talented person? British. We literally steal all of their top talent. So the, the ones that remain on the island, they're just like kind of stuck with. He was just like spicy British because he was like weird and flamboyant. And he was never, he wasn't like big enough to go to America. So they just like kind of, uh, they just kind of kept on, held on to him. When the show was in its fifth series, Channel 4 and Endemol launched Big Brother's E Forum a live show about the daily activity in the Big Brother house. Brand was hired as its host. Wow, cheers. Welcome to Big Brother's E Forum. I'm Russell Brand and at the Big w Brother was DLC. a huge moneymaker for Endemol and the broadcaster, with Series 5 generating £45 million in advertising revenue alone. Brand was now the spin-off show star. But within a few weeks of starting on set, he focused his attention on a junior member of the team. This is a picture of Russell that I took in his dressing room. The cue cards that I've kept, Big Brother's E Forum. This is a photo of the set. That would be us sitting in for rehearsal. I am a piece of wood, I will remind you of Russell. That's the kind of thing that he used to pass to me when we were rehearsing. I feel like there's some pretty basic stuff that you could just like do. Like don't shit where you eat. Don't fuck people that are like working under you. Don't fuck your fans. Like super basic stuff. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I just, uh, not that hard. It was only one of my first jobs. I was a runner. There was a, a real sense for me of being the baby. Don't tug the mask of that old lone ranger and you don't mess around with Slim. Yeah. Have sex with your fans' moms? Okay, that's not a rule. You're just saying that because I'm sorry, but your mom is a little loud at night and you need to go to sleep. I get it, but that's different, okay? That's like, that's allowed. I never said that that's not allowed. That is absolutely allowed. That's not a rule. And wanting to make an impression on everybody. If it was a show day, either myself or the other. Did you mention your new collection already? Just got the email blast, it looks so sick. I'm currently wearing it, and yes, tomorrow. Runner was assigned to Russell, getting him into makeup, getting him on set for the show. He had a way of, it's really hard to describe. He, he had a way of making me feel like I was special. Rachel says more senior members of the production team working for Endemol would take advantage of her friendship with Brand. Russell used to have days where, you know, he was more approachable than other days. And I think there was definitely an element of not wanting to rock the boat with him too much because of his association with drugs beforehand and the fact that he wasn't that long out of rehab and that he could be quite vulnerable. If the producers or the series producer or director or anyone wanted to get a message to Russell and it perhaps wasn't going to be taken that favorably, they would get me to go in and tell him because they knew that I would soften the blow, because they knew that he liked me, that we had uh, a relationship, a friendship. So it, de it definitely felt like I became a bit of a pawn it's really difficult to recall the exact moment that the line was crossed from friendship into something more. One of the memories that is very vivid to me and will forever stick in my mind. I think I must have gone to see what he wanted for lunch and he saw that it was me and he turned around towards me. I wasn't incredibly close to him, but I saw that he had his penis out of his shorts or trousers and it was in his hands and he insinuated that I might like to suck his dick. 
I obviously didn't go and suck his dick, but I also was scared to rock the boat. I was incredibly shocked. I felt very anxious. I was scared of what the repercussions would be if somebody had found out. Obviously, he was the presenter and I was a runner. I wasn't going to tell anyone what he'd done because I didn't want to lose my job. Uh, one thing that this documentary does very well is, like, detail exactly why coercive circumstances are also bad from the perspective of the victim. Like, you often don't get it. I think a lot of people, you often don't get that in commentary. You don't get that in documentaries. You don't really get it as much in, like, broader news coverage over this kind of issue. Um, they do a really good job of, like, voicing the concerns from the victim side, they do a really good job of like describing uh, the the power imbalance, like the coercive components of like your boss pressuring you, what those additional pressures are. As time went on and his flirtations grew stronger with me, I was flattered. I'd been sucked into his world, I suppose. He was a very intoxicating person. Rachel says she met up with Brand outside work and they had sex for the first time. He made it clear to me that it, I couldn't tell anyone else on the crew. It had to be a complete secret because he had it written into his contract that he wasn't allowed to have any sexual contact with anyone working on Big Brother. Wait, what? The newspaper later reported that one of the conditions of... What the, what the fuck? So they knew? Like, they already knew that this was, like, a problem? And they just kept hiring him? We're literally like, yeah, dude, just, like, stop fucking people. Like, stop raping people, stop sexually assaulting people. Like... We want to keep hiring you. We just want to make sure that everyone in England knew. Wait, really? I feel like, is that one of those things where people just say that, like, after the fact? Or is that one of those, like, um, is that one of those things where uh, it's kind of like Seinfeld, right? Like, Jerry Seinfeld openly dated, like, a 17-year-old. A or was it 16? Like, it was in the publications, you know what I mean? But I guess that was, like... I mean, it was still gross for the time. It was Shoshana Lonstein, who was allegedly 17 when she met the comedian. Not only was Lonstein supposedly underage when they met in 1993, the two had a large age difference of 21 years. Seinfeld was 38 years old then. It was assumed they knew there was an implication of it being very possible that he did those things. No one outside of the industry knew. People, i.e. the public, were aware that he was a sex addict. It is debatable. It was an open secret that he was a rapist within the industry. Brand's hire on Big Brother was that he wouldn't sleep with anyone on the program. Brand himself wrote in his autobiography that before he was offered the Big Brother job, his agent, John Knoll, had to sign a contract guaranteeing he would be no trouble. I didn't know that he had this history of sex addiction, but they obviously did, and it was enough of a concern for them to write it into his contract. It sounds slightly dramatic, but with hindsight and now as an older woman, I can say with clarity that, you know, I felt like I was groomed um, for sex. There is a responsibility of production companies. They enabled him to exist in these environments where he was able to take advantage of his who he was. Big Brother was, it was like a world in itself. And getting into that world felt like an incredible achievement. And I felt very lucky 
Right, the housemates have only been locked up for four days and yet already are starting to think of fizzy pop as some sort of precious magical elixir. My role was to recruit audience members for the live show. We used to go out flyering out by the universities, find university students who would come down and um, be on the show. Anarchy in the Big Brother house, first of all, right, they cut short their medieval tasks. That's not proper, all right, is it? Russell was pointing out women that he found attractive in the audience and then getting the runners to get their details so that they could meet up after the show. He would give a runner a piece of paper and it would be a phone number or where to find him in his hotel room. They would give that out to at least two, three girls in the audience. And I say girls because they were like all over 18, but they were all under 22. Oh, hello. Oh. I distinctly remember getting phone calls from women in tears the next day saying that they'd met up with Russell. They were mainly upset because they just felt used. You know, he promised he'd call me, he said he'd speak to me again, and I've not heard from him. That said, you know, I don't know what went on once they left the studio. It felt like we were essentially taking lambs into slaughter. We are basically acting like pimps to Russell Brand's needs. And it was really horrible to listen to those women being so distressed and upset. We had the same situation in France, one of the most famous TV anchor. He's accused of raping so many women. The most popular French YouTuber before his account was also demonetized by YouTube was outed as a uh, as a statutory rapist as well. I forget what his fucking name is, but um, he literally was like, he apparently, yeah, he apparently, like even uh, he apparently even raped a uh, a a underage. Uh, he he brought like a girl from Quebec over. Maybe is it is that his name? If you show gave me his full name, I would tell you. I tell you if that's who I'm thinking of or not. Remy Gallard. I think. Wait, is it? Oh, this this one, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, one of France's most popular YouTube celebrities has been detained by questioning by the police. It's Norman Thavod, and he literally was like, uh, he he, bro, he would like women accused them, like women girls accused them. Okay, uh, there was also a a uh, like girl, a Canadian, like French Canadian girl, who accused him of of uh, assault. And, like, what he would do is basically, like, fucking bring them over to his house. Like, bring young girls over to his house who would say that, uh, you know, who would not tell their parents what they were doing because they're, like, underage. And they would go to his house, and then he would, like, fuck them and then tell them to leave. And, the, and then they're, like, in fucking Paris or whatever. Um, yeah. And for the record... The authorities didn't do anything, and then he turned around and uh, got demonetized by YouTube. That's it. Um, and of course, when that shit came out, he immediately apparently started doing uh, apparently started doing right wing commentary. Always the same. Just didn't feel right. This runner was also working with Brand on another Channel Four show made by Endemol, called Kings of Comedy. Part of my job as a runner was to go and, and collect Russell from his hotel and bring him to the studios. Russell would answer, you know, just in underwear, usually, although obviously knew the call time, knew he should be dressed and ready. He'd try and invite me in. Would always jokingly say, surely we've got time for a quickie. I had my radio and I think I always made sure there was a way of contacting the studio. So I did think, oh, gosh, hang on. I don't really want to be on my own here. It doesn't seem like a great situation to have been put in. I think that our production manager had talked about being alone, and I think that was one of the reasons I had walkie-talkie. On the next series of Big Brother's E! Forum in 2005, Crews say they told more senior members of the production team at Endemol that they had concerns about Brand's behaviour. I kind of felt something wasn't right. I didn't like it. I discussed it with one of the other research team 
and we sat across from, there was like a talent booking manager. She was pretty old school, had like a Rolodex of contacts. And she was just like, girls, girls, you know, it's what happens with the talent. Boys will be boys. Another crew member says she raised a separate complaint alongside a colleague. We reported what had happened and what we'd seen them and said that, that these calls had come in. We didn't hear anything more about it. I don't know whether that complaint went any higher than our production management team. It was definitely met with, OK, well, that's not OK. I don't know if anybody spoke to Russell. The behaviour didn't stop. The crew members say they don't know if the complaints went to the top of Endemol or were passed on to Channel 4. Big Brother is cursed? I mean, yeah. It's, uh, not the first time. Everybody should be able to report their concerns and everybody should be able to report unacceptable behavior. One of the shocking things is that this was going beyond the production team. It was going out into members of the public who came into contact with him through his broadcasting. Both the broadcaster and the production company are jointly responsible for duty of care and for standards to be upheld during the production. After his second series on Big Brother's e-forum, Brand was sent to rehab once again by his agent, John Knoll, this time for sex addiction. While at the clinic, Brand wrote in his diary about his time on the show. He later published... Is the Channel 4 part of the BBC or different? No. Um, Channel 4 reporting on Channel 4 enabling a rapist? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how that works, but it does seem like... Uh, is it... Endemol, it seems like Endemol avoided the question. It was public owned until last year. Dispatches is a separate team, really superb stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I respect the work that they put into this. This is like, this is very good investigative reporting. It makes it all the more wild. Like, I'm glad that I'm seeing this because I read pieces of this, right? Um, Over the weekend, I read pieces of it, like bits and pieces. But I mostly saw defenses on the timeline from, like, the likes of Ben Shapiro, the likes of that, like, random, what is it, GBN or whatever, like, the super conservative Fox News of the UK uh, lady who was, like, getting ripped to shreds by her fucking co-host, GB News. Um, and I, like, I couldn't believe how much they were just, like, going out to bat to defend this dude. And then now seeing, like, the actual reporting on it, it's fucking nuts. Mostly saw defenses on the timeline from, like, the likes of Ben Shapiro, the likes of that, like, random, what is it, GBN or whatever, like, the super conservative Fox News of the UK uh, lady who was, like, getting ripped to shreds by her fucking co-host, GB News. Um, and I, like... I couldn't believe how much they were just, like, going out to bat to defend this dude. And then now seeing, like, the actual reporting on it, it's fucking nuts. ...published it in his autobiography. Russell, you have fucked up every professional opportunity you have ever been given. Now that you've been given yet another last chance and are finally free from drugs and alcohol, you have already begun to tarnish your reputation at Big Brother. Hello. 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 Hi. Hi. After being treated for sex addiction, Brand was rehired to host four more series of the lucrative Channel 4 show, now under its new name, Big Brother's Big Mouth. John Knoll Management said for legal reasons on which they cannot elaborate, they are not in a position to provide a response. Banerjee UK, who acquired Endemol Shine, said, We take our duty of care to our cast, crew and staff extremely seriously. While Endemol did have a code of conduct, support policies and escalation procedures in place... 
Dude, every part of the corporate structure on this is so riddled to the fucking brim with, like, classic corpo speak tropes, okay, up and down. Like, we've conducted investigations, and we're going to continue conducting investigations, but our investigations were not as thorough as they used to be, and now they're much more thorough. It's like, oh, God. And then in America, corporations are people. There's no more TOS in the rest of the... Yeah, okay. During the period in question, they were not as robust as our current processes. We are sorry these women did not feel supported and protected, and in light of these serious allegations, encourage them to contact us in confidence. Banerjee say Russell Brand's contract did not include any clause pertaining to sexual relationships. Channel 4 said... We are appalled to learn of these deeply troubling allegations on programmes between 2004 and 2007. We have carried out extensive document searches and have found no evidence to suggest the alleged incidents were brought to the attention of Channel 4. We will continue to review this in light of any further information we receive. We will be asking the production company who produced the programme to investigate these allegations and report their findings. Today, Channel 4 has a zero-tolerance approach to unacceptable behaviour and a robust code of conduct requires all suppliers to have in place rigorous safeguarding policies and provide whistleblowing support, including Channel 4's Speak Up facility. On Russell Brand's contract forbidding sexual relations at work and unacceptable behaviour in the workplace, they say, To the best of our knowledge, the contract contained no such clause. Looking on the face of it, it's like Russell having sex with women over 18 who are seemingly consenting. So what's the big deal in that? The thing that is not OK, it's this atmosphere of women being dispensable, women being used for sex, that you can pick them up at work, like out of a menu. They're all really harmful attitudes and it creates an environment of permission which then can snowball into things that are more serious. He also focused his attention on a junior colleague, yet the show catapulted him into the mainstream. Please welcome Russell Brand. Russell Brand! Yeah. In 2007, he fronted a series of primetime TV shows and starred in British feature film, St Trinians. That same year, Brand published his first memoir, My Bookie Work. I think in the future, what we're going to look at uh, as like weird and gross is shit like this. Well, we already do now, but like there are still celebrities and stuff that like kiss their fans. I feel like that stuff is going to be considered like completely unacceptable it kind of is now but like which even was the more christmas so number the one bestseller it's a searingly honest account of sex and drug addiction bulimia and self-harm and it's written by russell brown uh, lovely hello. innocent russell brown yeah, butter <laughs> wouldn't melt you're listening to bbc radio 2 it's the russell brown show and here's your host i am by 2007 Brown had secured himself a top spot at the BBC with his own show on its flagship station, Radio 2, along with his co-host, Matt Morgan. He'd been promoted from his slot on Radio 6 Music, where he later hinted in his autobiography that he'd been having sex with competition winners in the toilets. He implied that the station controller, Leslie Douglas, was aware of this. Bro, this dude was an unstoppable force, man. What the fuck? I don't understand. I thought corporations, like, cared about self-preservation. I guess, I guess, like, they didn't give a shit because it was, like, you know, women, right? Is that what it is? It's a pattern that seems to follow Russell Brand throughout his career. He misbehaves. He transgresses what would normally be acceptable within broadcasting and he gets rewarded by a promotion by another show by something else we used to be on bbc six music we've been i suppose you know let's call it promotion we've been promoted to radio two jimmy savile is like 
the perfect representation of like an entire media apparatus looking the other direction and like pretty much every single person in positions of power looking in the other direction. And this guy was like, Jimmy Savile is not just like a regular demon, okay? I would say he's the type of motherfucker that even other deep like you know how people say like, oh, pedophiles get killed in, in prison? Jimmy Savile's the type of dude where the devil would shank him in hell, okay? The devil would be like, nah, man, you got to go to a different layer of hell. Like, you are creeping out all of the pedophiles down here. Guys, this person also definitely looked the part, too. This person literally didn't just, like, rape a broad array of ages all the way from, like, children to, like, 90-year-olds. Literally built the, the disability wing of a hospital where he would go to that hospital and, like, rape sexually assault uh people who had in who had disabilities who could not move okay he built a hospital to fucking rape people he was a necrophiliac as well i think he would personally go to the wings of the hospitals that he used to either work at because he would also volunteer at hospitals okay jimmy savile for those of you who are saying who the fuck is that guy this guy was the most famous person in the uk like the most famous person in the UK, okay? Raping cancer victims is like beyond next level, level evil. He literally, guys, I, I don't think you understand. Jimmy Savile is the most prolific rapist of all time. Yes, 100%. He straight up, I'm, you're not hearing what I'm saying. He built wings of a hospital, like the disability wing of a hospital, with the express purpose of going to rape the people there who were like comatose, or could not move and could not speak. He also was a knight, was knighted by the queen, was big friends with Margaret Thatcher, and also, uh, you know, the royal family, for the record. Soon after joining the station, Brand repeatedly directed... Look at this, yeah. <laughs> Dude, the fucking Jeremy Hunt. And by the way, we only found out about this after he fucking died. For the record, ex BBC DJ Jimmy Savile sexually assaulted victims aged 5 to 75 in NHS hospitals over decades of unrestricted access, according to reports investigating the alleged abuses in 28 hospitals. The health secretary had to comment on it. I mean, look at this art. Look at this title Jimmy Savile, mortuary security was lax. Who the fuck says that? Sexual comments towards a newsreader. <coughs> She's erotic, that newsreader. Blimey, what a sex bomb that woman is. I'm going to go in that newsroom one of these days, and while she's reading, do you know one of my fantasies? Don't. Because <laughs> we are going to get under that desk, and we're going to unleash hell on your thighs, woman. Brand said on air that the newsreader wasn't happy, and she'd told senior colleagues, but the behaviour didn't stop. The uh, producer just told me that uh, she was, we've upset her. They pointed out in the, the production side of our program show, they go, uh, she ain't got the right to reply because she, like, we say all these things about her, like, oh, yeah, it's a she's doing the news. Imagine her just in her knickers. On one show, without his co-host, Matt Morgan, Brand interviewed Jimmy Savile, who was later exposed for his sex crimes. Ah! During the interview, Brand offered up his assistant, naked. It'd be very nice to meet you one day, Mr. Jimmy Savile, just, well, you know. if you've got a sister, you could meet me by bringing her along. I, I mean, I haven't got any sisters, I but... I don't usually meet fellas, but if you've got a sister, that's okay. I've got a persistent called... Part of her job description is that anyone I demand she um, greets, meets, massages, she has to do it. She's very attractive, Jimmy. Well, that's, that, that's a good start. R what it's kind of... Start, you... The guy... I'm so glad I just went on a random fucking tangent about Jimmy Savile right before this. Holy shit. Did not pre-watch this documentary. Holy moly. Now you understand why this conversation, especially because Americans don't know who the fuck this guy is. Now you understand why this conversation is so especially odd. Because Jimmy Savile was yet another person, just like Russell Brand, who was profoundly famous. Okay. And is still, to this day, as far as I understand, the most prolific rapist of all time, okay? But also, uh, looks gross as fuck, number one, and openly joked about 
like the gross shit that he was doing on a regular fucking basis. You could send her along to do some research. Would you like her to wear anything in, in particular to Jimmy? I'd actually prefer her to wear nothing. Right, so you want my assistant to meet you naked. Okay, well that's that's not going to be that's not going to be a problem. Oh yeah, Jimmy Savile wasn't just famous. He was famous for hosting uh, kids television shows where he would like it was like the original it, he, his show was like basically the original fucking like make a wish uh, show. That was the format. The the Jimmy Savile interview just beggars belief. Again, he is demeaning one of his female colleagues. He's basically saying, you know, Oh, you also, know sorry, I just want to point this out real quick. He looked like this. Trigger warning, uh, most prolific pedophile. I'm not even kidding. Like, how do you England needs to England needs to just answer for the crimes of just letting this dude roam around. Like, and and before you think like, oh, Hassan, that's just like one image. That's got gotta be bad lighting. Nope. He just looked like that. And he ran around like that. And people in the UK loved him. Like, they were like, oh, man, what a funny bloke. He's a funny bloke, that one. That's what they said with that voice. Basically saying, I am her pimp. Somebody should have said it's not acceptable to continually have these jokes about sex, uh, jokes about women. You can see a very clear pattern of unacceptable behavior <laughs> that consistently undermines and demeans women and that leads to sexual exploitation of them. Members of staff were angered by Brand's behaviour. On one occasion, Brand exposed his genitals whilst urinating into a bottle. A witness claimed this was in front of colleagues and guests. One appeared to be a minor. This witness gave us an account. They described the incident as shocking and entirely inappropriate. It's over there, under your bottle of urine. Hey! That bottle of urine was a gift from the Queen! <laughs> right! <laughs> This is BBC Radio 2, online on... Staff say a complaint was made to station controller Leslie Douglas, but no formal action was taken. A press officer acknowledged that Brand had urinated in the studio and was quoted as saying, someone has shown him where the toilet is. Just a few months later, production of the show was awarded to Brand's own company, Vanity Projects. The broadcasting regulator off. Yeah, this guy was a pedophile. Shocking. There was a lack of clarity about who at the BBC had. I, are you joking, man? Are we? Are we joking? Are we Hoboken joking right now? Motherfucker came in and said, "What's your views on Taiwan?" Hands-on editorial oversight of the series. He's got to be a mobile. In October chatter. 2008, after Matt Morgan was no longer co-hosting, Brand and his guest Jonathan Ross called Faulty Towers actor Andrew Sachs and left a message on his voicemail. Brand had previously been in a sexual relationship with Sachs's granddaughter. He fucked a granddaughter! <laughs> code red! Code red! I'm sorry, Mr. Faulty! No BBC executive had listened to the pre-recorded show before it was broadcast. It led to 44,000 complaints and was dubbed Saxgate. Well, it would be silly of me to speak without thinking because that's caused all of this um, trouble, so perhaps I shouldn't. I'm oh, just sorry that I've upset Mr. Sax. Russell Brand resigned. Radio 2's controller, Leslie Douglas, and another executive also resigned. A later report by Ofcom and an internal investigation at the BBC had no reference to any previous complaints about Brand. What? Russell Brand needed oh. to be tackled directly. He needed to have a very experienced executive producer who would take him on and stop things in their tracks. He was allowed to say the unsayable. He was allowed to do the unthinkable and consistently got away with it. Matt Morgan said, I stopped working with Russell Brand several years ago. During the time I worked with him, 
I was never aware of any allegations of serious sexual misconduct against him. I absolutely condemn all forms of mistreatment of women. Looking back on the time I spent working on radio at the BBC, I am regretful to learn that a show I was part of made colleagues uncomfortable at times. A representative for Leslie Douglas said, Ms Douglas did not at any time encourage, enable and or fail herself to take any adequate steps within her power with regard to the conduct of Mr Brand of which she was aware. She is presently unable to provide any further information which may be relevant to the matters raised in the programme due to the obligations owed by her to her former employer. The BBC did not respond to questions about complaints being ignored by senior employees. They said, Russell Brand left the BBC after a serious editorial breach, as did the controller of Radio 2 at the time. The BBC reviewed what had happened. We hope that demonstrates that the BBC takes issues seriously and is prepared to act. Over successive years, the BBC has evolved its approach to how it manages talent and how it deals with complaints or issues raised. We have clear expectations around conduct at work. These are set out in employment contracts, the BBC values, the code of conduct and the anti-bullying and harassment policy. We appreciate there are two outstanding freedom of information requests. We apologise for this. Although Brand's time at the BBC had ended in disgrace, he was finding new opportunities across the Atlantic. Well, what are you going to do in Los Angeles when you get on? Got to do a special for Comedy Central, start rehearsing my film with Judd Apatow, and I'm making a film with Helen Mirren. In the US, his profile continued to grow. Come on, mate, anyone can pull it off for 10 minutes. I'm nice for 10 minutes. So you're not like this all the time. You don't want to be around when the laughter stops. One day, you might realize it's time to switch. In the US, now on Channel 4, with allegations of sexual violence that viewers may find distressing, it's Russell Brand in plain sight. By 2010, Russell Brand had transformed into a Hollywood A-lister. He was now living in the US and starring in one blockbuster after another. After a whirlwind marriage to pop icon Katy Perry, Brand's fame had reached new heights. The outrageous British comedian whose wild antics have taken him all the way to the studios of Hollywood. Things was getting a bit fruity out there. All right, Liz, <laughs> we goodbye. Were, yeah, thank you. Well, it's been really a wonderful experience. <laughs> See you later, Liz. <laughs> All right, take care. <laughs> Russell, I can undo your bra just like this. It was at this time that Nadia alleges she was raped by Brand. And just months later, another woman says she was left traumatised after an experience with him. I moved to LA. I moved out here for just for chasing my dreams. I met him at an AA meeting and he pursued me like right away. After an AA meeting? Oh. I slept with him willingly. Like, for the record, willingly. He sold me a dream, very manipulative, very, like, you know, you're the greatest thing. Like, want to you know, have my babies, ridiculous shit, but nothing, like nothing further. Sometime after their first sexual encounter, Phoebe says Brand called her and asked her to work with him. I, of course, am like just so, you know, big break, eager, like, yes, of course. So I took the job and it went really well. 
He had me on for a long period. We did a lot of stuff together. He'd have a comedy show and, like, would invite a bunch of us and, like, my friends would come. It became what felt like a friendship. Everything we did work-wise revolved around his sexual behaviour with other people. And because I had slept with him, it was like... It didn't hurt, but it hurt, you know? I've just never seen any man have power and, like, manipulation over women. Like, I watched this guy, I mean, pulled women out of the audience, kicking us out of his dressing room and fucking them in the dressing room, you know, just revolving door of women every day. I mean, five-plus women a day, just absolute mayhem. Phoebe remembers working at Brand's house before they left to go to a show. They were running late, so Phoebe left her belongings behind. We came home together in the same car. And we came back to the house and I was like, OK, cool, I'll go pack up and I'll leave. Then the assistant left to run an errand. And without me realising it, I was left alone with him at the house. He came into the room. I can't remember if he was naked or if he was in underwear, but he ended up naked at some point, and he started, like, chasing me. I was almost laughing because I was like, there's no way this is happening. And it got a little more aggressive. And then I think I realised this is not a joke. Like, this is really... He, he's really serious. And I went to walk back out to get out of the bedroom and the, the door had been locked, which I hadn't seen him do. And he grabbed me and got me on the bed. Oh, really did a saw trap, like, fucking nutty. I was fully clothed and he was naked at this point and he held me down and he was just aggressively trying to, you know, fuck me. And I saw something come over his eyes, I swear to God, like, black. His eyes had no more colour, they were black. Like, a different person literally entered his body. And I was screaming, and I was like, what are you doing? Like, stop, you're my friend, I love you, please don't do this, I don't want to do this. Like, he, I think he had his hands down my trousers but I was fighting so hard and I was screaming so hard and something snapped and he heard me and he got off of me and I got up and was like what the fuck and he flipped the fuck out on me like fuck you you know just like super angry and I'm sobbing I run to the front door grab my shoes and I run barefoot to my car Phoebe says some of Brand's US colleagues were outside the house waiting for him to join a meeting. And all the people that he had the meeting with were standing in the fucking driveway. Years later, I ran into one of those guys on another job and he pulled me aside and he said to me, I have never forgiven myself for not running in that house to save you. I heard you screaming and I didn't know what to do and we were all so scared of him and I didn't do anything and I'm sorry. I really think it's worth people realizing that when most people get canceled, it's not an Aziz Ansari situation of poor communication and potential creepiness, but genuine, cruel, and disgusting behavior. Over the course of an extended period of time, oftentimes with like criminal implications uh, that come after these investigations are concluded, but also uh, the other part of the story is that like I don't even know if this guy will get fucking quote unquote canceled because he's mostly independent at that point, uh, at this point, sorry. And not only that, but he's also, like, nestled comfortably in the bosom of, like, far-right conspiracy and misinformation trafficking. Um, so, you already fucking have him, like, you have Elon Musk defending him. 
You you had like the someone in, on Twitter said the Rape Avengers came out of the gates swinging for him like Elon Musk, fucking uh, Andrew Tate, and so many other people immediately were just like, "Nah, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. He's a good guy." YouTube demonetized them, but ultimately, there's always going to be uh, people who who defend people like this. Now, part of that is because like a lot of people have developed parasocial relationships uh with the man matt walsh and ben shapiro and all of them also defended him as well of course of course of course of course part of it is because like he is an anti-vaxxer like that is huge you know when you're a fucking anti-vaxxer these people who would have thought the people that are most susceptible to misinformation motherfucking anti-vaxxers would you know also immediately rush to defend a person who is uh, who, who is being investigated, you know? There's also another, like, deep uh, well of, of, like, recovering addicts that uh, like him because of all of his work uh, in recovery and what he talked about. I then start receiving phone calls from Russell. He's so apologetic. Oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I... Please, 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 please forgive me. I didn't mean to. A few days after the incident, Phoebe says she had to return to set. She thinks Brand found out she'd told a friend about her alleged assault. I remember Russell getting me towards the bathroom. I always thought he, his heel turn... I always thought his heel turn was odd. Because Russell Brand, despite being, like, kind of weird and a crystal mommy and, like, looking smelly, um, oftentimes had moments of clarity... Especially as it pertained to, especially as it pertained to, I don't know, media, imperialism, socialism. Like a quote that I oftentimes repeat uh, about when I was poor and I defended socialism, people said I was jealous. When I was rich, I defend and I advocated for the poor. People said I was a hypocrite. After a certain point, I realized that they just didn't want me defending the poor. That is a Russell Brand quote. He was, I believe, homies with Mark Fisher, too. And it's really interesting that, you know, he just, like, unceremoniously did this, like, weird-ass fucking heel turn. Right around the time when these investigations started, Um, I love when people come in and go, you were poor. Like, that's that was my, like, that's your takeaway from this quote. Mark Fisher wrote Exiting the Vampire Castle about him, I think, before all these allegations. He also did Laws for Changing Public Perception of Drug Addicts in the UK, which by all means still isn't great. Yeah, Russell Brown... Russell Brown, Russell Brand, for a very long time, was an ardent defender of of socialism, and like he still was kind of kooky even back then, for sure. Okay, he always was kind of kooky, and eccent and eccentric. And you're having an R. Kelly fan moment? No, I'm not, not at all. I'm just saying it's it's very interesting that he just had like this fucking shift. I always thought it was more authentic. Uh, and not for cynical reasons, because I thought his brain got cooked by COVID, like many other people. Like, hey, too, you want to do more fun things? Did a full politics stream again? It's only been six hours. We still got time. And turning the water on so nobody could hear him talking. Socialists are, in fact, very capable of rape. Yeah, I wasn't saying that at all. Of course. Of course they are. That's not my, that's not my sentiment. I'm simply stating that a person who put his fucking brand name everything out there in a really really unorthodox fashion when he didn't have to at all he was already like a brand household name like he didn't he didn't have to rock the boat at all like he he did not have to he did not have to ever say stuff like that which i thought always was interesting because like that, to me, does signal some level of authenticity in your belief. Turning around and just, like, making a heel turn. That's what was odd to me. I didn't know any of this shit. I didn't know... I only knew him as, like, a weird-looking guy. I didn't know his stand-up bits either. I just... I'd only seen the socialist shit that he was saying, okay? And I'm talking about not this kind of thing, but instead, like, his personal politics, and the way that he presented his personal politics, the way he put himself out there, seemed genuine. And then his fucking shift, his rightward shift on, like, the COVID shit, also kind of seemed genuine because it didn't happen overnight. It did. 
it did happen over the course of a long period of time. And was basically like, sexual assault is a serious allegation, and if you're fucking serious, I need to know because you'll be hearing from my lawyer. I don't know what I said at that point. You know, like, I don't remember that day well at all. I think I was in a trauma response. I don't know if I just completely disassociated from what was happening. I mean, it was really tough. He was a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. That is supposed to be a safe place. That's supposed to be like a sanctuary. And after that, like, I almost drank. I was fucked up. And I just didn't know how to process it. I felt like I had nowhere to go. I didn't feel safe. It felt like I couldn't go to meetings. I was too afraid to see him. I never heard from him again. I never saw him again. I'm at peace with it. I thought it was a right wing plant fairly early on. He riled up the youth to not vote in a very important election and the Tories had a field day afterwards. First of all, that's just being a fucking British anarchist, okay? British anarchists famously say that all the time. So much so that his friend Mark Fisher has also ironically criticized that kind of behavior. And uh, what does he call it? Uh, Mark Fisher has a term for it. I forget. But yeah, that's just, you're describing literally British anarchists. That's all you're describing. You're not describing that he's a right-wing plant. When I think about having children, having a daughter, and how this had happened to her, you know, that's why I'm talking to you. Not Vampire Castle. A year later, for the first time, a sexual allegation about Brand is made public. His former girlfriend, Jordan Martin, published a book under a thinly disguised pseudonym, revealing intimate details of their relationship, which she describes as controlling and manipulative. The book contains her description of an incident where he got angry and then sexually assaulted her. Lifestylers, yes. Jordan also told her story to the Mail on Sunday, but when the newspaper printed, the reference to the assault had been removed. She says she believes the newspaper was asked to take out the line. Oh, Jesus! It was like, he threw a bra, but he threw it aggressively. It was sort of a bit sexually exciting and a little bit frightening, as all sexual interaction ought be. Thank you. Daniel Sloss is an established name in comedy and has been performing since 2007. He's heard allegations about Brand's treatment of women on the comedy circuit. This is scary. This is intimidating. And if I'm scared of this and, and there's almost no consequences to me, what do people who have suffered uh, and, and been subject to his alleged behaviours, how, how must they feel? I, I could not say something. So from the second I started, he was a big name. Big, big, a big, big household name. Everyone in the big. UK knows who he is. If you, if you were a comedian and you got to gig with him, that would be you kicking with, you know, a celebrity. Just there were many the TikTok, stories. Yeah. It wasn't just coming from one person or one group of people. You know, it was different incidents. Um, over different years and of varying degrees of I gotta severity. Pee. All right. I'm stood in artist bars with agents, promoters, channel commissioners, and I'm hearing these allegations and these rumors about Russell in the same room that these people are in. And then later on, he would be in a movie, he would be on a television show, he would be hosting something. He was still being employed. I know that there are 
groups that's set up by uh, female comedians where they warn each other of comedians and agents, people in the industry who to uh, avoid. And I know for many, many years that women have been warning each other ab ab about Russell. I know there are comedians who have made references in jokes to Russell's alleged crimes and have either been asked or told to not do those jokes anymore. Hearing that is intimidating. It's scary. You don't know where these people are coming from and how high up it goes. Questions that should have been asked uh, about Russell before he was employed for certain things. I do not believe they were asked. But you do look. Oh, I thought they were. Uh, oh my God. I thought these. I thought him and a bunch of other people were saying I was getting away with stealing the views from Channel 4 or something. Look at people who are in higher positions of authority in this industry and think to yourself. In Phoebe's story, it doesn't seem like he raped her. He just tried to do it and she resisted yeah that's still attempted you know what i mean and it's still definitely traumatic yes there are instances where he's like um there are instances where he certainly was attempting and failing to sexually assault someone well there is more you could have done yeah so i talked about the canada india thing Some people come to escape chatters i talked about the canada india thing it's, extensively it's with Indian Hasanabi as well. I worship divine sexual female energy. Yes, thanks, thanks, thanks. I'm saying that not only because it's true, but also because it's nearly the end of the show now. And I know if I say stuff like that about women and divine sexual energy at the end of the evening, there's no way I ain't getting laid after the show tonight. By now, Russell Brand had been at the forefront of British comedy and television for over a decade. He was beginning to find new audiences as he started to voice his opinion on UK politics. Is it true you don't even vote? Yeah, no, I don't vote. Well, how do you have any authority to talk about politics then? No, let me finish, mate, let me finish. You no, know, probably I don't agree with, apart from my admiration, uh-oh. I'm a bit worried that, like, I'm a bit worried that Channel 4 is going to cover his uh, eccentric politics as, like, predominantly fucking left-wing, and that's why he was a rapist or some shit. Uh-oh. ...admiration of firefighters, much that Russell probably... Pay says, their pensions but, then, love. Well, I'll, we can come to Excuse that. Excuse the sexist language I'm working on there. One of the things that people really don't like is men talking over women on these types of shows and yes. our voices not being heard. And I apologise. Alice, who alleges she'd been sexually assaulted by Brand eight years earlier, when she was 16, now had a career in television and was working for Channel 4. What the fuck? Yo! Oh, shit! There was a meeting that I was sat in, and it was with a production company and group of commissioning editors. There were discussions about a show that was going to happen and who the presenter was going to be. And it looked like the most likely candidate was going to be Russell. That's crazy. Okay, that's a fucking plot twist, dude. This documentary has literally a fucking plot twist in it. There were a couple of people in the room that raised concerns about him because it came to light that there'd been previous situations where he'd been inappropriate with staff members. The solution that was offered was that we would take the female staff off the crew and then if there were women there what's the freak out about though ben Shapiro said that's legal in the uk so no problem right you're joking right you're joking right i mean first of all we're in america so ben shapiro and matt walsh who routinely talk about fucking people grooming oh, okay you're joking okay good um because ben shapiro and matt walsh talk about grooming all the time like People are grooming our children. People are grooming our children. And then, like, when you have a situation where, like, a dude literally fucking groomed a 16-year-old, they're like, oh, no, but that was cool. And then they would never be alone with him. I was in disbelief. 
Alice says one commissioning editor in the room strongly opposed what had been suggested. Brand wasn't hired as a presenter on a Channel 4 show in 2014, but opportunities with the broadcaster kept coming in the years that followed. I'm a good role model for a child. <laughs> never yield the sex appeal, Jim, never! There's always opportunities, there's always flies to be caught. He comes across sometimes as a caricature of himself. Oh, that's not true, you've completely misunderstood! <laughs> So you've got this great big vagina and this... <laughs> That's it, Prue. And this That's why I came on this show. And he also appeared on other channels. You aren't allowed. You're enabled to... to enabled be is a good word. Yeah. Yes, I suppose if you're in a position of some success, people will let you be a nutter as long as they're making money out of it. When you look back at that promiscuous lifestyle, do you think, does that appall you? Do you think, God, I was disgusting? Do you look at your daughter now and think, I hope she never meets Simply, Russell Brown when she grows so up? Don't get so worked up. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a promiscuous lifestyle. What the fuck? as long as you don't violate the boundaries of consent. Like, I don't... I, the, the one aspect of this entire document, documentary that's, like, been a little weird to me, specifically, has always been that they they basically tailor, like, they tailor footage and cut in, splice in footage of, like, um, things that do not violate the boundaries of consent or talking about certain things that... Uh, you know, or, or even like uh, talking about how promiscuous he was and then basically using that as like a reinforcement to be like, well, look, he's a he's a rapist, right? Like, I mean, look at this. And it's like, that's the that is where I'm like, well, you know, it's really good. It's a really good investigation overall, but that's not how that works. You know what I mean? This man was a predator and they're very good at showing this. No, I agree. I just don't like when, um, you know, I just don't like when people conflate the two because it's like that is not appropriate it relies a little bit on uh puritanical perspectives it relies a bit on uh puritanical perspectives when making an argument that is already like airtight you know what i mean but i mean ultimately it's like a very uh it's a very tiny part of it it's not that big of a deal i don't find it to be like that big of a problem but i am aware of it you know what i mean because I, I i feel like a lot of people that watch this, a lot of people that watch this will not even notice that and their takeaway will just be like, oh, he's promiscuous, he's a slut, he's a hoe, he's inappropriate, he's loud, and like, he was, you know, doing it in public in, in such a fashion. And in certain instances, like, he is doing it in public in a fashion where he's like talking about his predation, but uh, in other circumstances, like this one, like, are you afraid of, you know, are you sad that you had a promiscuous past and it's like at that point the person who's asking that question is not like aware that he's a fucking rapist you know what i mean does it appall you no my dear in 2020 alice contacted brand's literary agents to tell them about her experience with him when she was 16 years old i phoned the officers and i asked to speak to his agent Somebody asked what it was regarding, and I said, that's regarding Russell Brand being a sex offender. I was put straight through. I said, I want you to be aware of what your client does. But I was told, OK, well, he's away at a wellness retreat at the moment. I'll contact him, and we'll have another phone. I noticed it, too. It's almost like they want to paint him as an addict rather than a genuine predator. Well, I mean, I feel like that also uh, does a disservice to people who aren't predators but are are you know sex addicts or whatever right i mean that that or uh drug addicts or uh, addicted to alcohol things of that nature um it's it's like it doesn't actually uh i don't know it, it it's a weird thing that you can just like kind of use to defend it to be like oh i was very open about my sex addiction like you can you can say something like that to just literally be like, oh, I was just a sex addict, as you can see in this fucking documentary. And it's just my sex addiction that took over. And in certain moments, I was just like completely oblivious to what I was doing. Um, I didn't realize it was like that. They're blowing it out of proportion or something like that. I haven't seen his uh, counter, but I assume he has one where he probably says something along those lines. Uncle. His lawyer emailed me 
was very aggressive, said very clearly that I was after money, implied that it was almost blackmail, what I was doing. And I pointed out I've never mentioned money, I've never asked for money, you're the only person that's ever mentioned money. That was how that Hello, communication they... ended. Over recent years, Russell Brand has stepped away from mainstream television and gathered over 28 million followers across his social media platforms. One breath, a charm. Online, Brand discusses conspiracy theories and often takes aim at the mainstream media. The media, our friends, our allies, telling us the truth and definitely not amping up some stories and ignoring others in order to shape our reality to benefit them and their corporate partners. He also gives advice on relationships and addiction and makes millions in the process. 12-step recovery, not just for nut jobs and wackos, although nut jobs and wackos are, of course, welcome. If you're having a lot of one-night stands, I think, like, as long as everything's consensual and no one's being hurt, not you or the other person, what does it matter? Offline, Brand immerses himself in groups which support vulnerable women. In July of this year, he hosted a wellness festival, with most of the proceeds going to women-only addiction charities. A week after being asked to respond to the allegations in this film, Brand posted this video. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something crazy. So there's a cut there that's like odd. Let's watch it from the top. Any awakening wonders. Now, this isn't the usual type of video we make on this channel where we critique, attack, and undermine the news in all its corruption, because in this story, I am the news. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company, one from a newspaper listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, as well as some pretty stupid stuff, like uh, my community festival should be stopped, that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narratives on this channel. But amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent. Why is there a fucking cut here? The relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. It goes from always to consensual. It's like, bro... You couldn't do one fucking jump like you you had to cut that part it just like comes across way fucking worse than it i mean this is always going to be bad anyway i was always transparent about that then almost too transparent and i'm being transparent about it now as well and to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that i absolutely deny makes me question is there another agenda at play Particularly when we've seen coordinated media attacks before, like with Joe Rogan, when he dared to take a medicine that the mainstream media didn't approve of. And we saw a spate of headlines. Bro, that's crazy. Yeah, he's like, I'm being attacked as a bold truth teller. I mean, for everything you can say about Joe Rogan, it's not like the fucking media is calling him a rapist. You know what I mean? Like the media shits on Joe Rogan when he says dumb shit. Like they can't, you, you know, there's no... There's no avenue where people are like, oh, yeah, Joe Rogan, famously, he's like a rapist or a groomer of children, you know? He's gone full right-wing conspiracies.
you know? Perhaps there's something different going on, is from what media I media mean. outlets across the world using the same language. I'm aware that you guys have been saying in the comments for a while, watch out, Russell, they're coming for you, you're getting too close to the truth. Russell Brand did not kill himself. I know that a year ago there was a spate of articles, Russell Brand's a conspiracy theorist, Russell Brand's right wing. I'm aware of news media making phone calls, sending letters to people I know for ages and ages. It's been clear to me, or at least it feels to me like there's a serious and concerted agenda to control these kind of spaces and these kind of voices. And I mean my voice along with your voice. I don't mind them using my books and my stand up to talk about my promiscuous consensual conduct in the past. What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. Now, I don't want to get into this any further because of the serious nature of the allegations. What do you mean he's getting a Rumble contract? He already has one. He interviewed Ron DeSantis on his Rumble show. Allegations. Mr. fucking I hate mainstream media interviewed literally institutionalist Republican Party defender Ron DeSantis, who unironically tortured or sorry, oversaw the torture of of prisoners in Guantanamo Bay when he was a JAG lawyer. OK, this idea that like Russell Brand is still uh, a, a bold truth teller, blah, 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 all this shit or, or even is ostensibly left. This is so silly. You want to know something? You want to know why it's silly? If you don't want to believe the words that are coming out of Russell Brand's mouth, look at the words that are coming out of his defenders' mouths, okay? Because his defenders are overwhelmingly right-wing commentators who 100% would jump at any opportunity to fucking destroy a person who's a prominent leftist figure who regularly do it um, with false allegations, not of, like, sexual misconduct or whatever, but, like, Literally, shit like buying a fucking house or buying a car and, and being rich while socialist and, and how that is actually somehow hypocritical in their worldview, okay? They defended every single person that uh, has come out and been accused that is ostensibly on the right, like Andrew Tate, and the reality is that they would have defended Jeffrey Epstein too if Jeffrey Epstein wasn't, like, presented in such a lib way, Okay? That is the reality. All these, like, fucking Jeffrey Epstein uh, uh, truthers out there would have 100% been fucking defending him if he was an out-and-about right-wing guy. Absolutely. fucking literally I've said this years ago, and I stand by that sentiment, okay? One million percent. Oh. Uh, I feel like he's trying to do the Trump defense. The whole world is out to get him because he's shaking up the establishment. What a sick joke. Yeah. I feel like I'm being attacked and plainly they are working very closely together. We are obviously going to look into this matter because it's very, very serious. In the meantime, I want you to stay close, stay awake, but more important than any of that, if you can, please stay free. Yeah. They only hate him because of connections to Clintons and other prominent liberals. Is this being narcissistic or him trying to find the best way out of the allegations? Um, I think uh, this is... I don't know. I, I think that this is like him being narcissistic and him trying to defend himself from the allegations. Criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question, is there another agenda at play? What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. Well, how is he a hog vegan crystal mom? I There's a lot of crystal moms and it, who it are hog me. vegans. It hurts me. <sighs> now he's a wholesome family man who's like the king of wellness. Oh my god. His dog looks he like fucking things. Kaya a little bit. It's almost as if there's no retribution for that. It could have been nipped in the bud at the beginning of his career. Had he been pulled up on it, had he been held accountable for his actions. 
They knew that he was at the best inappropriate work and unprofessional. That's the higher ups at Channel 4, that's at the BBC. They've all had a hand in facilitating it. They need to be accountable too. How many people walked into comedy, met Russell, had a bad experience with him and left? Do you know what I mean? How, culturally, what are we missing? He went from being a heroin addict live on air on MTV to a sex addict live on air on E4 to a predator live on air on Radio 6 and Radio 2. He kept progressing, nothing held him back, and so he thought he could do whatever he wanted. I've been waiting since I was 16 for it to hit the papers or for it to be on the news that he's been arrested or that somebody's reported him and it's stopped the abuse. 